Hello and uh, good afternoon. <clears throat> Conversation to people. It was nice to have a little Zoom meeting in, for a change last week. I hope uh, you took the opportunity to speak English as much as possible to your classmates. And as I said, uh, you know, um, socializing is part of what makes us human. <clears throat> And it's difficult to do that on Zoom, although I did participate in a round table with my university um, a couple weeks ago. Uh, yeah, a couple weeks ago, November 5th. <clears throat> and I was surprised to see um, how efficiently people communicated using the chat and, and um, you know, having cameras on and uh, taking turns. Um, that That's... Um, Maybe easier for native speakers to do, but anyway, we uh, those of you who came, there were a few people who missed class. Some people slept in. One person <clears throat> got up late or missed the the first class and snuck into the second class. And I pointed out the only reason she was able to do that is because she knew um, somebody from the second class and got the password from him. Otherwise. I, you know, she would have had to talk to me, but um, she managed to do that because she had a, another friend in the English department, and um, that's what friends are for, right? Help you sneak into another class, but I mean, in a real class, that wouldn't work. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to just walk in the class um, suddenly and be like, hey, I'm here. I missed my class. I'm just joining your class for today, professor, because I feel like it. So, you know, um, we need to talk about conversation in that respect too. That's again something that's missing from this class because of the lack of interaction between students and uh, feedback from me to you. You get plenty of time to listen to me and I don't get enough time listening to you. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I will, I'll just recap really, really quick what we talked about in terms of the presentation because a few students missed that and uh, one student was sick. Um, you can't help being sick, that happens sometimes. So the presentation information has been posted. Uh, the due date is there and everything, all the criteria for evaluation. So now you just have to record it and whenever you're done, email it to me. Um, I was told that there's something like a 10 megabyte limit on the file size for the system, for the, for the cyber campus system, that's way too small. Um, some, something compressed, it'll be, you know, between 50 and 100 megabytes probably. If it's not compressed, it'll be more than that. But like I said, use a file size that's reasonable, a file format that's reasonable. Um, so that I don't have to download something enormous. But you can just, you know, put it on the cloud. Uh, if you have a YouTube channel, you can put it on YouTube and just keep it private and let me watch it only. Whatever, doesn't matter, as long as it's you um, and you're speaking English, right? Um, somebody asked about the, yeah, the topic. I'm not, to be honest, I'm not sure if I answered that email or not. And if I didn't, I apologize, but that's a question I can answer for all of you. I said last week in the Zoom meeting, your, the topic is your choice. Uh, it can be anything as long as you present that topic in English, um, 100%, right? If you use other languages, it must be uh, transcribed or translated somehow so, so that we can understand using English only, right? Um, but the, the topic, all I said was that please choose topics that are not too um, basic, right? Like introducing my pet uh, is not a university level uh, topic. So it doesn't have to be, you know, um, it, of course it's not supposed to be a graduate student thesis defense. It's a five minute talk. So. Pick something specific that you think is important and talk about it, right? It can be anything. You can, like I said, the format is open. You can 
sell something, you can argue something, you can persuade, you can be funny, you can tell a story, you can do a speech, you can sing a song, all right? You can act. Um, that's your, the format and topic are your choice. If you're worried about what you chose um, being appropriate, you email me, this is the topic I think, and this is how I'm gonna present it, is that okay? And I say, yes, that's fine. Or I say, no, choose something else. Or I say, that sounds okay, but maybe let me suggest you add this or change this or, you know, focus the topic a little bit more. That's what, uh, I never said you couldn't ask me if my, your topic was a good topic. So, you know, everybody knows my email address. That's how you're going to submit uh, the presentation anyway. So if you have a concern about your topic choice, it's up to you to communicate before you finish it. Um, after you hand it in, it's too late. Okay, <clears throat> we, this is week 12. We have one more, we have this topic, and then we have next week, and then we have the review, and then we have the exam. So all you have left is this presentation and two more recorded lectures, and then I'm going to do a review of all the questions and, um, you know, grammar points and reminders. And uh, we, I will set the schedule, which um, the schedule will be the same as the schedule before the um, KT internet disrupted us, okay? So we'll do it over two weeks, and uh, instead of doing it on Zoom, you'll come to my office at the appropriate time. But I will post that those Excel files again, so you can double check. But remember, um, Sujin and there were four or five of you. Donghyun, maybe, there were four or five of you who, um, because of internet issues, uh, were delayed to the next week, but this time you'll be in the first week. So I'll be, the exam will be the same thing. Well, there'll be two separate Mondays for people to do their tests, okay? So uh, I will post that information soon. Um, this week, I will post what day you should be here. If there's some problem with that and you have a good excuse, then we'll work it out and I'll change it. But I will post it first, and then if individuals have some sort of problem with, you know, uh, accommodation or time relative to some other classes, then we'll work that out, okay? But first, let's just stick to the original schedule, and if that works, then good. Okay, <clears throat> so the title of this chapter is misleading. This is important um, because I'm not going to ask you what have you been doing. Um, I don't want everybody to say I've been studying for exams. That's what happens when you ask that question uh, on an exam. <laughs> everybody says, I've been tired and I've been studying and I've been finishing my papers and uh, I'm stressed out. Like, I don't, that's not a good thing to ask. So <clears throat> we're going to talk about time management instead. That's going to be our key word for today, time management. So make sure you write that in your book or make a note that uh, you don't want to just um, forget that's what I'm going to ask you on the exam. Um, so some of these things they talk about are relevant, but less directly relevant once we focus it on managing time. So let's start, let's start with the, um, the grammar point for this week. Um, Present perfect, very useful tense uh, because it indicates something that is happening in the past and then it continues until now, right? That's why um, a lot of the time Koreans just use uh, past tense or present tense and then uh, say until now because it means the same thing. Um, but that's not the way you would say it if you were trying to be fluent. You would say... Uh, I have been living in Korea for 15 years, right? I've been living in Korea until now, right? That's the same thing, but <clears throat> it's, a, it's a smoother way of saying it because it's easier to say the time, right? The, the length of time, right? 
It's been 15 years since I moved to Korea. All right. It's been 15 years. It's 15 years. You can't use until now in that situation. It doesn't work, right? I lived in Korea 15 years until now. That's incorrect. So that doesn't work. Sometimes it'll work, but anyway, the meaning, that's what the tense is means, until now. So if you tag the end of the sentence with until now, it's good, but it's not very precise. It doesn't fit with lengths of time, um, so that's the limitation. So there's a present perfect continuous as well, which means the action is ongoing, right? It's Saturday afternoon, what are you doing? How long have you been doing it? I'm shopping at the mall. I have been shopping for three hours. I'm living in Korea. I have been living in Korea for 15 years. Not quite. 15 years in one month. 14 years in 11 months. <clears throat> That's a long time. Anyway, it doesn't matter how long it is, as long as the action is, is still going to the present, right? To the, from the past. That's the thing. Present perfect is from the past, right? To the present. And there you go. That's pretty useful when you're going to talk about time. Okay. Um, so yes, somebody, somebody's going to say something like, um, in conversation one, when I talk about people introducing themselves, how to introduce yourself, uh, we talk about, you know, people saying, what's up? And how are you? Um, and hello. And um, what's going on? Stuff like that. What have you been doing? Um, these are all questions you can ask. But if you say, how have you been? That usually means you're not introducing yourself. That means you already met. Right? When you see somebody again from last semester or from a few years ago or from last week, you can just say, how have you been, right? Um, <clears throat> and the person will, will um, you know, get you up to date. They'll update you. This is really what somebody is asking. Is it, update me. What, what's ha what, what things happen that I don't know about, right? Um, bring me up to speed. These are all kind of formal ways of saying the same thing, right? Brief me. Brief me. Brief means short, but it also means give me some details about summarize. This is the um, term in the military, right? In um, when you are on a mission and then you come back from the mission, you have to say, um, describe, report what happened. And so you you get briefed, right? Um, you come back from the mission and you get debriefed. That means you um, give your report, um, do the briefing, and that's that process is called debriefing, um, especially if you're a spy, right? If you're working in military intelligence and you have important information to report, you go to your commander and you give the report, and then they that update is called a briefing. Okay, so if you ever hear that word in a movie, something like that, you're watching an action movie or, you know, there's <clears throat> a war movie documentary, that's what they're talking about when they say briefing or debriefing. All right, good. <clears throat> um, now, essentially what this uh, question is about is what you do with your time. So you have to describe to me um, how it is you think um, you, it's kind of like the, the family question, right? Remember the family ties question? Um, some people did very well in that question, actually. So this is, this would be good for you. Those of you who did, you had to kind of choose, um, to describe your relationship with somebody. It could have been somebody who was a friend or actual family, <clears throat> or it could have been a relationship with another student, a colleague. Um, a boss, a coworker. I, I left it open to you, right? I gave you the choice of talking about lots of people chose people from their family, brother or sister or parents or something like that. But the, the choice was up to you. Um, in this case, you have to describe 
your relationship with time, not your relationship with people, but your relationship with time. Uh, some people are, um, what can I say? People have, it, it's a strange thing sometimes to talk about, but you develop um, your behavior around your relationship with time, okay? So, um, this, this gets, <clears throat> this is part of um, things that, how you handle stress as well, right? Um, it's, it's part of the way our society works too. So, some people are, let's just say, some people are lazy, uh, some people are active, some people are passive, some people are energetic, um, some people are um, sensitive, some people are not insensitive, or uh, some people are easygoing. Okay, I'm, I'm, some of these words are negative, some of them are positive, but yeah, I mean, lazy and easygoing can be the same person, right? Sometimes when somebody doesn't care about being 20 minutes late, you can say, oh, that, that person's always tardy, they're always late, right? Or you can say this person's easygoing. It's like, ah, whatever. And that same person, if you are 20 minutes late, they should be also understanding, right? That's an easygoing person. I'm late 20 minutes, you're late 20 minutes, not a big deal. We don't need to worry about that. Now, that kind of attitude <clears throat> or that sort of flexibility uh, can be a bad thing, as you know, if you don't care about the beginning of class. Um, I mean, I'm more of the punctual per person type. I don't mind if somebody's two minutes late, but you know, if you sign on to Zoom like 30 minutes late, or you come to class 30 minutes late, um, I consider that absent. I don't consider that, that's too late. If there was a test, yeah, you can't start the test, right? Uh, when, once uh, a test is started and you're 15 minutes in, then um, that's it, you failed. So, you know, if you show up for a job interview 20 minutes late, you fail. You missed your job interview. That's, these situations don't, are not flexible, they're inflexible. Uh, but you know, I, I am aware uh, of the stress that that causes. I don't sleep very well. And it, well, like when I have um, an early class, I used to teach, I, I still have recently taught classes at 6.30 in the morning or six in the morning. They're always business classes because businessmen um, study language sometimes and do um, extra education um, before they start work. That's, they don't have time or they're too tired after work. So they get up early and they study before. If you're the person who's teaching that class, you gotta be up. If the student doesn't show up, then the teacher still gets paid. But if the teacher doesn't show up, the teacher gets fired. So, so not only do you not get paid, but the class gets canceled and you don't do it anymore because you're unreliable. Um, so, I, you know, and I used to work at a factory when I was in university. And um, that, that is what we call, sometimes we call it industrialized time. And uh, it's something that uh, is part of my British and American culture class, but I haven't talked about it specifically, but I'll talk about it here, you know. Um, I will talk about it in the next few lectures. When uh, human beings started industrializing their economies uh, in, in Britain, in America, in Germany, and Northern Europe first, and then everybody else uh, followed this pattern, um, it was the trains. Originally, it was the trains that um, required precise scheduling. So... Uh, no matter, in the United States, for example, they started to, because the, the trains were so expensive to make and the, the, the rails going through the mountains all the way to the Pacific, that was such an enormous expense for companies and the government that they didn't, even though in some parts of the United States, in the winter, they get 10 meters of snow. Yes, 10 meters that you can't uh, expect a train 
uh, to get through that. Can you? Yes, you can. You, you have to because even though um, there's rain or snow or tornadoes or whatever, if you stop the train for four months a year, um, you, can't, you, you can't generate enough money to make it worthwhile. So, that, you know, the American post office and the American transportation revolution um, turn this, you know, 24-7, 365 thing into a reality. The trains would plow through. They would smash through the snow and ice. And uh, if there was anything short of a hurricane, wind, rain, storm, ice, snow, blizzard, flooding, the trains, the, the mailman, uh, the post office did their job anyway. Um, and um, the schedules were, were maintained. And uh, if you go to Japan sometime, you'll see the precision, um, the end result of that, that concept, that everything has to be exactly on time, that you will wait at the train station in Japan. And uh, I think their average deviation uh, is plus or minus three seconds. So you can literally stand there on the platform and go three, two, one, whoosh, and there comes a train. It's, it's inhuman. That's the thing. It's inhuman. Is that natural? No, it's not. Is it, is it good for our life? Well, I mean, you can look at your phone and say, okay, the train's going to be here in 10 seconds. I was in Japan with my brother and we're like, he's like, hurry up, we can catch the train. I'm like, okay. And we're running into the train station, running up the stairs. And like, as the train pulls up, we, it's like that, it's that precise. You run into the, the door opens and you just run into the train and, and then you go. Um, it, they follow the schedule exactly. That's kind of cool, I guess. You always know when it's going to be there. You always know when it's going to, it's very reliable. It's very efficient. Um, you know, the movement of people, um, I was in Japan the last time, the last time was almost 10 years ago, I guess. And, uh, um, Shibuya, if I'm saying that correctly, Shibuya at the time was the busiest station in the world and 3 million people moved through that station. Um, and it was less chaotic than, uh, Seoul, Toronto, Toronto, especially Toronto doesn't have an excuse really. It's not nearly as busy as Seoul or Tokyo. Still busy, but but just chaotic, um, disorganized. You can get ne you can never get three million people through Union Station, in in Canada. Um, everything would be destroyed. <laughs> it's not possible. But in Japan, in Tokyo, it is possible. So this is what the advantage of this industrialization of of time of scheduling is. What we have now is. A clock we have you know time zones and when it's it's this time here and it's that time here it's one o'clock p.m. here in Toronto it's 11 p.m. right they're 14 hours behind us exactly but that's actually not right you know you have time zones so the difference in where the Sun is is actually um, minute by minute but we just make zones of them so you know if if you're all the way to the east of a zone for example like Japan again I'll use Japan because I've been there in the fall um, I was there in October and uh, the Sun goes down at like 4 p.m. it's because it's so far east but its time zone is pushed west right uh, pushed east rather because it's got a time zone uh, that's not really positioned good well it's not positioned well for for the sun so you end up um, having a very early sunset uh, in the winter in Japan in Tokyo I guess the, the sun goes down at 3 p.m. I was shocked I was wearing shorts this is the thing that was weird because it was warm and I was wearing shorts and a t-shirt and it was hot but the sun was going down at 4 30 um, very strange when the sun goes down at 4.30 in Canada, nobody's wearing shorts. That's when there's snow everywhere. So that must be 
um, and the sun came up early. The sun was still coming up early. So it's the daylight hours are the same, but the, you know, because of daylight savings time, we move the time. Lots of people hate that. But um, <clears throat> if, you're, if you're east of uh, where the zone line should really be, then you're gonna have a really early day. But if, for example, you're in Western China, they have a gigantic time zone. If you're in Western China, that the daylight is gonna come later in the morning. The sun's gonna come up later and it's gonna go down later. That's the way we've organized it. But just for the sake of scheduling, right? Just for the sake of scheduling, we have industrialized our time. Every class starts at this time. Every, when, when we had, when everybody was working on the farm, that's not how we organize our lives. In fact, winter was always slow and spring busy, Summer slow down again, especially in Korea, rainy season and too hot. Spring, you know, active, busy, really, really uh, lots of work to do. Fall, busy, active, really lots of work to do. And then winter, you know, slowing things down again. Construction and, and um, you know, traveling and, uh, and farming, all of those things slow down in the summer and the, in the winter. Um, anyway, we would, we would follow our, our, the rhythm of our lives would follow the seasons and it would follow, um, you still feel this, you still feel slower in the winter, right? And you eat different types of food and you wear different colors. We still have this sense, but, uh, our time, our time schedules usually don't allow for us to accommodate, um, the weather, the seasons, the atmosphere, um, our personalities, and our relationship with the environment as much. Although Koreans do have winter vacation, which I didn't like at first, but these days I've sort of gotten used to having a winter vacation. And when I go back to Canada, you know, someday, and and uh, or maybe I won't, but if I go back to Canada someday and I live there over the winter, I think. Uh, January and February are going to be completely miserable for me because they are. January and February in Canada are completely miserable and you have to work right through it. There isn't much in terms of holidays. There's no uh, Lunar New Year. There's no Salal. So you get Christmas and New Year's and then January and February is just cold and dark and long and depressing, freezing, and you still got the same industrialized timetable you don't have a shorter day like our ancestors did. So you just got to deal with it. <clears throat> but anyway, this is, this is related to scheduling. Um, we, we talked about punctuality already. Punctuality, this is one way of, you know, thinking about time, whether you should be on time or should you be flexible and easygoing, not concerned. I uh, just talked about industrialized time and making schedules. Uh, arranging when you're going to do something. Uh, multitasking is another thing you might talk about. This is one of the things that I uh, do all the time. Uh, whenever I whenever I cook, I listen to music or I listen to an audio book or a podcast um, or I talk to my kids or I watch TV. Um, you know, I do something at the same time. I walk my dog. Um, I listen to something at the same time. If I, I, I very rarely at home do anything by itself. Um, I might um, have a snack um, and listen to something and, um, you know, um, clean up the house at the same time. Three things at once. The more things I can do at once, the better. I, I'm always, um, I think it's a middle age thing when you're, you have a job, I'm a student myself, I'm doing my PhD, I have kids, I've, I'm married, I'm a parent, I have a dog, and I have a job. Um, so when I'm at home, I don't have a, uh, very much time. I can't sit down. I can't sit down and do nothing. If I, <laughs> I can sleep or do as many things as I can. That's my life. So multitasking is, if I was answering this question, I would probably talk about that personally. The other thing is I do all the time is um, you have to, if you have too many things to do, 
you have to do the important things first. You gotta decide which things are the most stressful, which things can be de delayed, when th what, th what's, uh, what things uh, have deadlines, right? What things can you do um, and what things do you have time for? This is called prioritizing. It's, it sounds like it would be easy, but if you have 10 different things you can do, there's different ways of arranging it. Like I said, I sometimes try and do the most stressful things first or the things that take the longest um, because that prevents me from sleeping or, or you know, disturbs me mentally. That's, but sometimes you delay the, the most difficult things because you're too tired or something like that or you don't have enough time. So you're like, okay, that, that thing needs to wait and let me get all these little things done first. And then I can concentrate on the big thing. Um, there's all sorts of approaches and that's um, how you can manage your time that way. So um, those are some things to consider. <clears throat> now these are some expressions here that I wrote uh, in the textbook on page 106 and 107. There is uh, a little passage there about wasting time, which we all do. Um, but some things are more frustrating than others. Um, the one they talk about here is looking for your glasses, your car keys, stuck in traffic jams. I mean, I'm, an, I'm a naturally impatient person. I, I try as much as possible to never drive in Korea anywhere from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Um, I, so for some reason in the morning, I, it doesn't bother me quite as much, but uh, the evening traffic, the rush hour traffic from six until seven when I'm trying to get home, or even when I'm on a trip and I'm going somewhere, it's just miserable to be moving at 10 kilometers an hour on the highway or stuck you know, in front of World Cup Stadium um, with nobody, everybody's in a hurry and nobody's uh, yielding to other people and uh, people are blocking the intersection and there's there's bottlenecks, you know, where too many cars are funneling into the same lanes. It's just a mess. Every country has this problem. It's worse in Korea than it is in Canada, but I've heard um, that's nothing compared to China or India. Um, the, the world record for, for traffic jams, I think, is in China. There was a, it was a traffic jam for like a week. So when there was the Chinese New Year, um, millions of people were trying to get down the highway and they, they just got locked up and stuck for days. Um, and that's, I, that's a, a world record. Don't quote me on that, but it, it is, it was a Chinese traffic jam. That was the longest, biggest traffic jam in, in um, history. Um, and that makes sense because China has the most people. <clears throat> so they would be the best candidates for the, the uh, record. So that's just a waste of time. Waste of time means it's gone. Passing the time means you just, you're waiting for something. Wasting means throwing away. It's useless. You're not getting any value. Passing time just means you're trying to, you know, get to something. You have some goal. Like, you just don't have anything to do. So that's like watching TV and changing the station and like just looking for anything to watch. You're passing time there. That's not a hobby. A hobby is something where you're spending time well, time well spent. That's the difference between a pastime and a hobby. An American will, you know, if you say my hobby is listening to music or watching movies, um, an American will say that's not a hobby. That's a pastime. That's something you do if you have extra time. A hobby is something you make time for. On the weekend, I'm restoring an old car. I'm rebuilding a car, right? I'm um, learning how to paint, right? I'm learning how to do impressionism like uh, Monet. I'm painting every weekend. I'm spending time learning a skill. That's a hobby. Walking around listening to K-pop music while while you're riding your bicycle or e-scooter and then parking it in front of the Inmunde where it blocks the entrance and, and annoys people. If that's what you're doing, that's pastime, okay?
That's not a joke, that's a real story. Please park your e-scooters to the side of the entrance so that especially people who are old can get into the building. Um, and anyway, things that you do just while time is passing, um, to even me, like listening to an audio book, I wouldn't, still wouldn't really call that a hobby. I'm studying, I'm listening, but it is to pass the time in a way that I think is not wasteful, right? Um, wasting time means you should have done something else. You know, if you're playing, if you're playing computer games when you're supposed to be doing your homework, that's wasting time. If you have free time for two hours and you play computer games, that's a little bit different. That's a judgment. You make the, you decide if it's okay or not. But I would say it's, if you have homework to do and you don't have time and you choose to play games, you're wasting time. But if you're done, I'm going to play a computer game tonight. I've, it's Sunday. I've been working all day. Um, when I, is that wasting time? No, I've worked for eight hours on Sunday. So I can play a computer game for an hour. I'm passing the time because I'm tired and I'm passing some time, but I'm not going to go to bed at 7 p.m. So I can play some computer games for an hour. I, that's how I justify it. Okay. And that's how I say it's a difference. Wasting time, you should be doing something else. Past time, it's your free time. Do it if you want, but it's, it's not developing yourself or pushing yourself or challenging yourself or doing something particularly creative. Spending time is just using it the way you want. Spending time with my family, spending time with my dog, spending time at the library. But when you call something a hobby, that means you're, you know, you're applying yourself and it's something that you do regularly. A hobby is not something you do once a year. It's something that you do every weekend, right? That's a hobby. Okay, so that's talking about how you use your time, time management. That's topic number nine. We have one more left. That's next Monday. Have a, have a good week, and I'll talk to you then. Good luck on your presentations.